Hello and welcome to the DFS underscore PhD show for today, the 26th of February. Remember, you're good enough, you're strong enough, and gosh darn it, someone's got to win that money. And congrats to Hefty, longtime uh, Discord member, because he's the guy who uh, first suggested that I make the Discord. And I was like, oh yeah, I probably should make a Discord. That makes a lot of sense. So um, glad to see you up there. I know the circumstances though, so I'll just explain the circumstances to everybody else. Simmons got hurt. And so if Simmons doesn't get hurt in this game, unclear. But um, he would have been really making a run. This was it. He, he plays generally one a night. And this was in the main. And <clears throat> you feel bad for that. That was incredible. Almost hitting the optimal on one bullet. So I just wanted to give you a shout out and general praise because that's very nice and was very probably the optimal if, uh, yeah, that injury hadn't happened. Don't want to. Yeah, so congratulations, and yeah, let, make that three hundred dollars last a while. Don't don't splash it all out for seventy five on this dumb slate tonight. You know what I mean? So obviously it's been a few days. Hopefully, yeah, but uh, yeah, great to see you getting a W hefty, and uh, yeah, everybody else. I took the weekend off, missed you guys, but played a little golf, two birdies yesterday. That was good. All right, so let's get back to today's build. I got some takes. So today my takes, I don't know the rotations yet. I'm just going to stick with Saber Sim's view of the rotations and stuff. But some of the lines, I just want to emphasize like the way things are for these games a little bit more. Like Indian Toronto is far and away the, the highest scoring game. None of these other games are within like 10 points of the median of this game for the teams. So I just had to have the, the like, I had to change the lines to su suggest that. I'll probably place a bunch of over bets for my, uh, you know, correlation pick of the day. Um, but I, I'll wait for them to post a few lines on that. Like th this time in the morning, you're just getting usurious lines um, for a lot of these games because we don't know all the news quite yet. I I was hoping we would get more news than this. We just got a smattering. I guess there's not really many questionable guys, but I just figured, yeah, what? Still got five, four games? So, I mean, there's going to be, I guess that's not that many people. There we go. There we go. There we go. Tyler, was Hero already out? I guess Hero was probably already out. Let's have a look. We got Tyler Hero ruled out live on the stream. Live on the stream. Breaking news. Ding 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 ding. All right. So welcome to the show, guys. Thank you for sticking with me through my uh morning show elements that I've just added to the show. Decided we're gonna do a lot of crazy noises. Wow, wow. All right. So Miami with Hero off the court. Just want to see, you know, so I can live update the projections. And this is what you can do too, if it's like you know, if it if this happens, uh, you know, ten minutes to to uh, lock, and you know you're not going to get another uh, draft from Saber soon. You won't if it's ten minutes to lock, right? So, I mean, maybe you get lucky and you do, but you can't count on it. So, what you do is you come here and you say, okay, how am I going to tweak things with? And then you put the guy off the court, hero. You probably already have an idea. By the way, was there anybody else on this team? Who else is on this team now? From the people who got ruled out just now. This is why I wait till now to make the show, guys. So I feel good. I feel edified. You know, normally I'm like, I wait this long and then right afterwards, you know, is when they, they all the news comes. But, you know, that's why. So ideally, like, basically my kid woke me up at 1.30. I was up to like 6 a.m. putting him back to sleep. Barely, right? But then, um, so now I get to make the show whatever I want today. And uh, this is about right. 11 o'clock Pacific is about when we get our first crack at like what's going to be the key things on the slate. All right. So Lowry obviously is not with the team anymore. Ah, Rogier, That's the other guy who was ruled out. Whoa. Okay. So that's big. I also need to go over here. Because Rogier was also questionable. Also ruled out. And bing, bing, bing. So right ruled out. Let me double check over here on my uh, underdog search panel i know thrilling thrilling content again thank you guys for sticking with me through uh not well you know this happened live on the show so it's not like i didn't prepare the show i was waiting for this and this happened so you know i was going to tell you i have a lot of pace adjustments so that's where the show is going to be that was going to be the whole thing now it's not the whole thing that's one thing but like Never mind. honestly like maybe i undo that thing right that thing was to accentuate the differences that existed on the slate already but now, do you have to do that? No. Now what I do is I go and I put in a little bit more money into this contest because I find it to be more than a 1%. Maybe now this is a 2% of my uh, my bankroll, right? So, I, you know, I, I, by the way, I don't just do 1% to 2%. I do 0.5 and like less than that. You don't have to stick to 1%. Like on the weekends and stuff, 
not even 0.5. I'm not doing anything on those weekend slates where they don't give you upside. Like I know I'm not going to be working, working. You know what I mean? If I'm working, working, then it's 0.5 to two units. Like some initially tonight, I wasn't even sure. It might be a 0.5 of my 0.5% of your bankroll. That's what I'm talking about. So, but now, now that we got this news, oh boy. Oh boy. It's my favorite kind of slate. Miami Heat dudes. It could be a Haywood Highsmith slate. I don't think so. Don't actually play Haywood Highsmith. But I mean, yeah, that's like exactly what it was like all last year that eventually he won me all that money. So maybe play Haywood Highsmith. I don't know. Okay, so now I need to put Rozier off the court as well, even though that's like, can't be that many minutes with this team. He just got here from Charlotte in case you guys are new to basketball. You're not new to basketball if you're watching the show, I assume. Like, But by the way, welcome. I have no idea how anybody gets here. But somehow in like four to six hours between lock, like a hundred ish guys watch this every time. And that's awesome. So nice to see you guys. Um, I don't remember where all of you come from. I need to keep better track of that. Uh, but yeah, uh, comment, however you comment. I really appreciate that. I like to comment back to you guys. You know, it's meaningful guy, you know, if I don't hear from you, if you're not in the discord and then you pop up and you just uh, tweet at me or say on YouTube, Hey, I missed you last couple of days. Where are you at? Uh, you know, that's just as valuable to let me know. People are watching this. Okay. So what do we need to do? Don't, Caleb Martin and Lowry is gone. So Caleb Martin and Hawkes get massive increases probably. So let's look. Caleb Martin and Hawkes, yeah. So both of these guys now starters, right? I mean, that's what we'll assume. I, so the other guy that could start here, there's other people that could start, but definitely Caleb Martin. I don't think there's, in terms of like ball handlers and stuff, what, what else do they do on this team now, right? Because the other guy's already out. Um, Richardson's out. Jovic, wow, Jovic is out, Butler's out. Wow, this is a thin team and a fun a fun slate now. I, I'm not going to take a break on stream to go and, and reserve more entries, but that's like, yeah, I'm, in, I'm interested. I'm way more interested in this slate than I was before we got this news on the stream. <laughs> it was going to be as, I already did have the uh, 0.5 to 2 units or percent of bankroll thing prepped, but that was to tell you to play the lower amount on this slate initially. Uh, that no longer works. Now, this is one of the more fun slates ever because it's the $4 to 100K up top, and we've got wild possibilities for Miami value. It's a topical slate now. Do, actually, you know what? Will they update? How, how many minutes has it been? 10 minutes? No. Saber. I mean, I love Sabersim. I'm impressed with Sabersim. I'm not changing. I'm not, I mean, I would entertain practicing contest sims after, like as an overlay and maybe getting ownership from a different source or something. But in terms of game sims and like that being a core part of any process... I'll preach that forever. They made me too much money not for me not to preach that. They made me a guy who is professional at this. So, and it's because I like Sims. Like I was already doing Sims in my life. Okay, chill out. I don't need to do any more Saber Sim plumbing. They're not paying me for this. So no more no more plugging them until I do. Okay, more than more than absolutely necessary because I actually do really love the product. Okay, so yeah, obviously the percentages are all wrong. I'm not going to update the ownership. Saber Sim will get there later. Um, but generally speaking, you want to have Caleb. Well, you know, he's he's been priced up. He's already, but just like who else is going to have the ball? Ah, Jacoby Myers touchdown on the Sims, so don't. Uh, but anyway, Caleb Martin, probably one of the best values, I'm guessing, on the slate. Anybody else going to be really low? Maybe it's time for a rule now on these wings, because you know we're going to have like some weird rotation. I don't like playing Haywood Highsmith at this price, honestly, even though I got the jersey up and I remember him winning me all that money last year. 4,600, too rich for him today, I think, in this rotation still. Let me think about the minutes here. We we just lost two guys who were playing a lot of minutes. A lot of minutes, right? We just lost Hero and Rozier. Oh, well, we won't know how many minutes because they're not there. Um, but, so yeah, they updated the ownership, but not the projections. Man, you know, we'll give them a few minutes here, and we'll think about it. We'll do what we can. Okay, so from Court IQ, we had Hakez for about 30.5, and we had... Uh, Caleb Martin for 31. So let's do that. Caleb Martin for 31. Hawkeyes for 30.5. Uh, Duncan Robinson. So here's what we got to think about rules is Duncan Robinson and like, I don't know. Who's who's the other? Never mind. No rules. <laughs> Duncan Robinson. So how much Duncan Robinson do we want? 30. I was like, because if he starts missing, they will go to cannot finish the sentence do not know <laughs> who else on this team could take a shot for this i mean kevin love is the end of that sentence so don't love that i mean is kevin love up at the top of this list he is he gets two points so yeah that's what i was about to say like i 
I got to give Kevin Love a little bit more interest on a slate where he's clearly overpriced and I really don't want to have any interest. But I mean, I'm going to have to have a smattering. Don't, don't introduce artificial limits at this point in the day. And generally now I'm going to have to undo even my 50%. Maybe I don't know how much I'm going to like some of these best plays from how many people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven man rotation now in terms of guys who played in the last game. So yes, they're going to add Jamal Cain probably to the rotation. I mean, somebody has to be here. I mean, who who else is here? Cole Swider available? Alondis Williams? These are people who will probably have, to, I mean, one of these guys, Orlando Robinson, Jamal Cain, Cole Swider, or Alondis Williams has to be active for this game. Doesn't have to be in the rotation. N not sure. I mean, like, reasonable chance you get 10 minutes from Jamal Cain, some chance you get 20. Depends on what the percentage is on Jamal Cain. If he remains at like 0% owned, yes, I will have a smattering of Jamal Cain, even on like 40 or 50 lineups, which is probably where I'll land tonight. But if, I mean, if he winds up at 10% owned, am I going to have any? Probably not. That's just like, it's just such a high ownership for the percentage of success that I expect from Jamal Cain. Okay. Um, Maybe I match the field just so I don't get buried by what is a a play I like, but still okay. You know, can I can I get a can I get a, a reprojection of this Miami team yet? I, I'll be impressed if they get it done by the end of the show. Honestly, there's really no reason for them to. Let me tell you about my pace objections to this slate. Number one, what what's going on in the? I guess the guess now that I'm thinking about it, the Miami game thing, all the under money coming in early was just what that was, right? Like the Miami Sacramento game. I think I had to change no. No, okay, so I, I see. So now that Miami is dog, I understand. Miami guys got ruled out, and they I thought earlier that they were too big of dogs. Now I don't think that they are too big of dogs anymore. After those guys are ruled out, we're going to go with the Vegas lines on that, and probably the lines get wider, right? So 100% agreed with that. Now, the so the games I changed were, I want Indy and Toronto to stand out in terms of points scored. These are teams that just smash the ball. They just or smash the ball, always taking shots. And so, yeah, I think you got to have interest in that game. I, I, well, I priced, hmm. Well, we'll see what the prices say. I mean, maybe there's just not price adjusted value on Indy today, but because I'm not, I'm still not getting to that many, even putting so many points on that game. Uh, and then, so Brooklyn and Memphis, that's the game where I just don't understand where the lines are. So I put the, like the implied defensive ratings of each team would put us at like, what is it, 117, 113 Memphis? But obviously Brooklyn's the better team, so I put them at 117, 113 Brooklyn. But the line's like wildly lower than that. And I think what's happening is I think people are adding up individual like player performances to get to a line rather than looking at like game environments and points and stuff. I guess I, I can't really figure out what's going on there, but generally speaking, probably wind up with a lot of Brooklyn and Memphis relative to the field. Because I expect a close game that's going to be higher scoring than most people think. So that's what gets you to leverage. So um, and I mean some awful teams here but also we have to think like that was my play before the slate had this weird miami turn now now the play is definitely any guy who is on miami does not have a 50 percent limit anymore all those guys are over 50 percent limits if they oh, also i'm just gonna have to rebuild because presumably those guys are better values than all these no maybe not hmm yeah now we're gonna have to have a lot of a lot of duncan robinson which was just clearly not the case before and was the oh yeah, let's make sure we got all the Miami guys figured out. While we're on the stream, talk about other guys who might be important here. We gave a few to Kevin Love. Haywood Highsmith is another guy who's definitely running full minutes now. 24.9. So, like, you know, not not he's very, very high priced. He's still not a great play, but if he hits his shots, he could win you a hundred thousand today, just like he won me a hundred thousand dollars last year. I remember it. And you know what? Are they gonna pull him in garbage time? No. Is he an old man? Yes. I, I, sorry, excuse me. I am much older than Haywood Highsmith. Let's look at his age. Just when I call somebody an old man on the stream, I want to emphasize he is 12 to 13 years younger than me. I mean, in terms of the league and his relative like career and stuff, if you looked at his Darko, whatever, I think over the hill, probably, I mean, the top of the hill was what, a championship, right? I'm not trying to besmirch Haywood Highsmith here, or at least no, not a championship. They won me money. But anyway, so he's making plenty of money and 
5.4? What's his price? I thought he was at 5K. Is he only at 4K? 4.6. So he's okay. He's okay today. All right. So let me see if I can get one more. Let me get Saber Sims take on these take on this ridiculous take, please. I love it right now. I know they're working on it. The projections are now from 11:28 a.m. So I'm assuming that means now we're just having a problem with East Coast time and they just did it. Oh, no, that's right now. Okay, great. Awesome. So we just got the Miami projections updated. Let's have a look. So, okay. Miami projections. Caleb Martin up to 26. And I have him at 31. How many minutes did they give him? Is this a minutes disagreement or is this a usage disagreement? That's always when I look at minutes, just so you know what I'm doing. That's why I'm doing it. Caleb Martin, 33 minutes. So it's a minutes disagreement primarily, a little bit of a usage disagreement. Either way, I'm not changing it. I think they definitely have to give him the minutes. Who else? Oh, no way. No chance. Alondis Williams gets these minutes, right? Has he this year, this entire year, played 20 minutes? No chance. Alondis Williams stats. Did he? I mean, like, possibly my mistake. Six minutes. Six minutes average. No way. Zero percent chance. Zero percent chance. I zero percent chance think that happens. I mean, we'll see what percentage they wind, the field winds up getting to, hyping themselves up about Alondis Williams today. But, I mean, to me, just the same amount of ridiculous as hyping up Cole Swider today. Ridiculous ridiculous to assume Alondis Williams is going to be a large part of this rotation. Ridiculous. Now, here's something you could do. So, like, not, I mean, did I miss something? Was there a game? I, I still, I have, I just have to see, did this happen one time this year at all that he played that much? Because obviously average wouldn't capture that. No. He has played in two career games and played six and five minutes. And they, and he, okay, so... <laughs> Let me just say, this is why you build your own projections. So when someone tries to sell you Alondis Williams playing 20 minutes, you can say, no, he has not played more than 5.5 average minutes in his life. If he did, I still wouldn't want more than 5%. What, what's the chance I think Alondis Williams gets there? And what I guess is blowout time? He's still not even min price, right? Didn't he, he's played a little. Okay, he's still min price. All right, all three of these guys. Here's something. So how many people are playing? Three, six, and they're going to have a total of nine 10 suited up so wait 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 was that right three one two three four five six seven delon Wright. delon Wright was active okay i knew i was doing some math somewhere wrong now with delon Wright active delon Wright's the best play of the slate and you play delon Wright. great so glad we got there um <laughs> glad we got there before the end of this dream he's definitely not going to be 6.5 percent. he's definitely a great play you play delon Wright, and then you think about other things on the slate i'm going to go over here I'm going to bump him up to, it's a four-game slate, 75%. Oh, also, I should say, same exact argument. How much has DeLon Wright played for this team? Because, I mean, like, I think he's the better guy to play minutes here. But have they been doing that? Yes. 13 minutes, 13 minutes, 14 minutes. Like, he's been getting a little, wait, versus the Heat? Wait a second. He's on the Heat, right? Okay, hold on. All right, popcorn machine time. We get trade season. I got to start looking at specific games and stuff. Uh, got to figure out what, I don't know what the order of these guys is from Miami. So we just have to look at a recent game and see who came in for who. And that's like the best guess we could possibly get. So that's what we're doing when we go to popcorn machine, just to update. I figure this is probably a useful exercise, even though I don't have any uh, rules for you today to show you what to do. And like everybody gets ruled out for a team. So first of all, how many minutes are gone with hero and uh, who was it? Somebody else is out, but I think they we're already out on this list. So yeah, Hero and... Um... Oh yeah, it's on Court IQ still. Rogier. So yeah, I think that <clears throat> Rogier is already out for this game. So Hero, we're only taking away 30 minutes from him. And I think most of those go to either... <sighs> so, hmm... Duncan's already playing 30 minutes. Do I really think they go to that much more overall minutes of Duncan Robinson? I mean, maybe if he's hot, he gets 34 minutes or five or six, but not that much extended. And really, he could get that many points even in 30. So you don't need to change your distribution for that, for a shooter. But Hawkes minutes, I think, have to go up. Highsmith minutes have to go up. Kevin Loves do not have to go up. So I, I don't... His usage may have to go up when he's on the court. I can see you making that argument, maybe. 
but you know, generally speaking, yeah, there has to be somebody new in the rotation, right? Because this is one guy going away from a four. And it's a nine man rotation. So they could just shorten it to an eight man rotation. It's fully in the realm of possibility. And I think that's way more likely than, than um, Alondis Williams playing all these minutes, but I don't think it's more likely than DeLon Wright getting in the rotation. I think DeLon Wright make, makes a lot of sense. So I, I think probably I agree there um, just because ball handlers, right? Is Alondis even labeled a sh he's okay. He's labeled a point guard. He feels like a shooting guard in terms of the way he's playing um, when I've seen him on the court. Okay. So we'll see. Basically what I'm getting at is some of these new guys have to play. And nobody's really sure. I mean, like, yeah, let's summarize my position here, right? I don't know who it is. Nobody knows who it is. These, this is a new team after the trade deadline, and somebody is going to be forced into the rotation here. So this is a pretty similar situation to game one of the finals where we don't really know who the guy is. Is it going to be Haywood Highsmith? Is it going to be, I mean, Caleb Martin was in the mix for some of those minutes. I forget who else on that bench could have got, I mean, I think even people were thinking, um, same deal, Jamal Kane could get minutes even in the finals or whatever. Hard to recreate the the arguments that didn't win you money after the fact. But it would be reasonable. And I think they're all min price. Cole Swider, Alondis Williams, Jamal Kane. Don't know. Don't know who's going to get minutes. Don't know who, how many it's going to be. Um, All of them like have some amount of upside. So I would love to get a, uh, let's see if we can get an ownership update here. But playing a one of three rule there, that's a way to get different. Ha <laughs> ha yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you one way I'm getting different on this slate for absolute sure. Unless, unless one, if DeLon Wright starts, maybe, maybe I'd play Alondis Williams as like a backup point guard expectation. Cause like, I, I just don't think they're going to do that. I think they'll start like Caleb Martin at the point or something weird like that. Right. So maybe they start one of these point guards. That's what's being assumed when you see a ton of Alondis Williams and a ton of DeLon Wright, is that they're going to have true point guards on the floor. Let me go double check, but I'm pretty sure what they would have done here is that these are going to add up to 48 minutes. 20 for Alondis, 29 for DeLon Wright. So basically 49 minutes between the two of them, exactly what you'd expect with a true point guard on the floor at all times. That's wrong. That's not what's going to happen with Miami. Caleb Martin is going to run the point for this team for at least... 12 minutes. They're definitely not going to split the minutes evenly between DeLon Wright and DeLondis Williams. That said, I'm leaving DeLon Wright and I'm taking all those minutes from DeLondis Williams just in terms of my personal preferences. You, you can't convince me this guy. Like if, if the median projection today is that this guy is going to play three times more than he ever has in his whole life. And like, oh, let's look at the odds. Like uh, if we go over to a sports book, is that, I mean, I assume the odds are there too, right? <laughs> Alondis Williams props. I mean, because really, I'm going to let you guys move the market a bit, and I'm going to take some unders today. Is really what I would say. Like, take alt. You can't take alt unders, right? Like, but you know, can we? Oh yeah, there we go. Is it really an Alondis Williams odds and player props page? There is. Can we take one today? What would we expect points wise? No available bets, right? He's barely, he's barely part of the team. So. I I don't understand what. I, anyway, I'm not trying to call out an early game sim. Keep working on it, guys. You'll probably eventually get there. But I think you're going to get to more Caleb Martin at the point. And when I say 10 minutes, right? So if I give him 10 minutes, that's like more like a 33 for Caleb Martin. So I'm huge on Caleb Martin today as the uh, de facto point guard. If people aren't going to get there, that's shocking to me. That's a shocking misread of the situation. Um, Caleb Caleb is, that, I, mean, I think he's their last choice point guard above these other guys. So we'll see. I, I don't know. But if you get the starters... And uh, neither DeLon or Alondis is there. And you've got 40% Alondis. That's one of the biggest 40% DNP risks of the year. Get get out. Get out. Like, for real. Like, that's what I will be doing. I will be at zero if um, DeLon is not starting. So, like, because, I mean, I guess you could. I would need to see. Okay, in that popcorn machine, did we know for sure who was playing in this game? No, neither one of them. Got, yeah. Neither one of them in the rotation. So it's a little tough. We need to go back to the last game where either one of them played, which I don't know, might be a ways, right? What's this? Soccer alarm. We got it. Pause it. Becomes an overlay alarm in 20 minutes. Okay, so I'm looking for old heat games to see who got in the game to find out and establish an order of DeLon Wright. But that's the thing. Like these are we're getting close to the all yeah, these are pre-all-star break. We don't have anything. So great. Good luck. Good luck, everyone. And I think I think what you should do here 
is whatever the field condenses around, don't do it. Don't do that, right? I mean, if really, if for real, I mean, 40% of Londis Williams is literally, particularly, oh, wow, a late game? Awesome. So we do still have, oh, this is awesome. So this game being at seven o'clock, we finally get to do a little late swap, right? Like, you know, we, we're going to be banned from late swapping on Friday. So we got to play a little bit of our actual game here. So this is the biggest opportunity of the slate. At 6.30, I will that check the Discord, check somewhere. Pay attention to those starters. If we do not have a true point guard starting, if we have Caleb Martin or Hawk as some fake point guard starting, you are not going to get this rotation that is Saberson currently is getting. You need to get less Alondis Williams or DeLon Wright. You max one of them for sure in that circumstance. If one of them starts, no more max one rule. Max one rule is off because then they could both get there. And like, if they really play these minutes, you can play them alongside each other, right? Because Alondis could get there. I mean, he's close to the, he is the men still. So if we get confirmation, that's another thing. If we get confirmation from coaches, oh, for sure, we want to have a look at Alondis. Now, granted, I did see that happen the other night. I played whoever it was that they told us to play. They were like, oh, we want to get a look at him. And he played like 10 minutes. I'm aware that this happens. But there's no motive, right? Whenever that happens, I'm just assuming it's because it blew out or or something really made them change their mind. There's not, why would you lie? It's a regular season game, right? So it, I don't think anybody's like literally as bad as the Atlanta Falcons guy, right? Nobody out here is really trying to mess with us personally, specifically. It's not their job. It's not helpful to them to mess with the people who pay attention to the sport the most. So let me give, uh, okay, any any thoughts on any other teams today? We probably talked for like 30 minutes about Miami. And granted, that's the whole slate. Like, I'll, I'll say some stuff about the other teams now, but that's an afterthought. Your whole slate is made by your decision about Miami Heat tonight. It's a late game. That's really fun. So make sure all of your top exposed guys, you know, now that I'm saying it, maybe I want to save some Alondis Williams just because I want somebody, like, it could be somebody. They could do something weird. Kane could definitely start. Somebody who has never played all year could start. Like, I could, uh, what's his name? Spolster is actually a good coach, right? So, like, this is a circumstance where a good coach might test out a new guy, you know? Like, maybe that's why everybody's coalescing. Maybe they're scuttlebutt. It's Alondis' night or something. I haven't seen that yet. But if we get that, 40% is a lot still. But maybe if he starts, you know, even then, I don't know how much I want. Because he's going to be alongside guys who I know are going to be aggressive and assertive. Not, not hero level assertive, but bigger than him. Okay, but other guys. Why is Josh? I guess Josh Hart's just like cheap because he never scores points, but that's fine. Um, let me look at my exposure. 50% McCall Bridges seems like a lot. Oh, right. Because, okay. Yep. I'm fine with getting to a lot of the shooters in that game because of my stance on the score. But I think now that we have the other games news, I only want to be one and a half uh, X on that stand. I want to be slightly above the field because I do believe it, but I want most of my exposure to be going towards these other games. So, on the top end, Halliburton's just going to be, I think I have to be at least 2x, maybe 2.5 because of the upside. Anytime it's, yeah, I, I agree with DK's take that anytime it's Chalk Jaron Jackson, don't be Chalk Jaron Jackson. I mean, like, now granted, what's, is he down to 8k? Oh, gosh. 8k with no jaw. Different story, different story. So now we got to make sure we know exactly what do we think his chance of getting his minutes limited due to fouls against Claxton or Who's at the four? McCall? Mm, they, they're all drivers. They could get him in foul trouble, but they're not like sneaky drivers. They're slow drivers. So I'm going to give him 35%. I think the field's fine, but I don't really want to be over the field much. But I do, I mean, like if we look at projections, there's no, there's no Giannis tonight, right? It's Sabonis, it's Brunson, it's Halliburton, it's Adebayo up here. So, you know, with those guys up there, you have to consider some Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, Okay. Did I make any other? All these custom, all the projection changes come from my changes in the the overs. So, Sacramento points didn't change. So the the residual change to De'Aaron Fox comes from matching games where the other team scored the amount that I'm projecting the other team for. But wait, didn't I say Miami? I cut that. Yeah, I cut that down to being. I want that to be back to like whatever it says. Oh, it's already fallen a point. Keep an eye on that. It's going to be a falling knife for Miami, obviously. But eventually, the line's going to be like ten or something. And that's going to be fine. And you can just play it. So um, I think that's the thing. Like BAM, how, how popular is BAM going to wind up here? I don't want 50% BAM. I don't think there's a 50% chance he keeps the game close by smashing it against uh, Sabonis. No thanks. I'll take like a 15% chance that that 
that scenario that I described that sounds extremely outlandish to me happens, right? I mean, because he's slow. I'm, it, the the apparent thing is that Sabonis could drive on him at any time, right? And I'm not not trying to be rude to him. Uh, Adebayo, maybe he smashes at, uh, Sabonis in the post, but it just I, I feel like he's a step slow to guard Sabonis. So I'm going to lean Sabonis over Adebayo in that in that matchup. Now, granted, I know that probably they put some sort of other defender on her, but I mean, in terms of the meta matchup. Okay, um, let's have a look. RJ Barrett, fine. Gigi Jackson, I mean, he's got him. He doesn't have to make shots. I do think that game scores more points than usual, but I do want to. I want to force my, most of my ownership off of guards in the high scoring games onto Miami guards at this point. So that's what I'm doing now. Is I want to make sure that my like these are solid levels still be two x the field on a Luke Kennard. Yeah, nope, not a good example there. He's a shooter, so fifteen percent max. But, you know, and and match the field on Keegan because he gets minutes, but no no more. No no going higher than 2x on anybody in any game than Miami, I think, today. Unless, unless it's like a top of the slate guy, someone else that's a huge stand to take today. If you think, oh, is Utah on the slate? Wait, where's Olenek? Toronto now. That's right, Toronto. So he is getting opportunity in that offense. I'm fine with playing a smidgen of Olenek, but this is a ton of Olenek. Just a smidge. Just a smidge of a Linux, don't just a smidge of DFS, which is like you, you're counting on stocks. That's why you can't even give him like 15% you would for a shooter because he's not going to take shots. Uh, Claxton popping up to the top. Absolutely no problem with that. He's going to have to be out there as much as he possibly can be. However, he is foul limited. And that's another, another place. Maybe there's a room for a little edge on the slate. You know, I like to do a fork and they have had a pretty consistent rotation here. Who's the backup? Dayron. Dayron's been getting the, yeah, right? I don't think they've, they do have Trenton Watford. The backup for Memphis is smaller. Like, Dayron's minutes are not secure. If he's 6%, he, you can take a possible flyer on a Dayron Claxton, um, what's it called? Uh, fork, right? So we'll see if I get there. It seems pretty cute with all the Miami value. I'll just throw that out there. But if I win $100,000, Ah, that's the thing. 6% day run. That's, that's not much meat on that bone. That's about the odds, right? I mean, what's the odds of an early Nick Claxton foul trouble against, I mean, Jaron Jackson Jr. Is a, he drives to the hole. I guess it's more than 5%. Yeah. I might be building this in. What's day run's price. Is he 4k or 3k? If he's close to 3k, we do it. Man, he's close to 4k. I don't know. I'm still on the fence about doing the day run. Claxton, Fork, it's probably not going to be in my rules section, but it is on my consideration list. Sound off in the replies. All right. If you watch this far, th congratulations. Um, I don't think there's much more here. Let's have a look. Do I have anybody else on my high leverage, high exposure list that I haven't talked about or thought about? That's mostly what it's about for me personally, is thinking about every guy on the slate in this context. Yeah. Bruce Brown's probably less in play now with all the Miami value, just because like, What's the upside with Bruce Brown? He's got guys above him in the rotation. He's not going to be taking that many shots, so we can't give him shooter upside. I give Bruce Brown stock upside. So Bruce Brown's stock upside is ten percent. I don't. I just I want to force ownership over to the Miami game. So that's what I'm doing. I want to. I don't have enough there yet. I don't have enough ownership on the Miami game. So I have to change it around and figure out what. Why do I not have that? Oh, one more. One more snooze. Yeah, what's going on here? Do I, am I limiting it? Oh, I'm limiting my Caleb Martin. I'm limiting my DeLon Wright. What's happening? Oh, did I not run it? I didn't rerun it. Oh, I didn't rerun it. Okay, so I'm going to have to rerun it. Ah, okay. So have they adjusted their Alondis Williams? Yes. Okay. I've it, I've given them enough uh, enough BS for now. I can, I can go back to the adjustments. Uh, oh, Kevin Love. They've gone higher on Kevin Love. They are not there on Haywood Highsmith. Whatever. I'm still there on Haywood Highsmith. And... They are, let's see, lower on Martin and Hawkes and Rob. Yeah, right. They're splitting the baby with, well, that's the thing. They didn't put the baby back from when they, Alondis Williams. Oh, they've they've widened the rotation further to possibly include Orlando Robinson. I guess this is the chance of a blowout. Yeah, that's fair. But Kevin Love is going to be higher and more in consideration. But yeah, so let's do a rebuild. There's just no, there's no pretending like the build I did before this Miami news is at all relevant. So let's forget about those. I mean, the plays that were good are still decent, decently good, but now the slate is on its head. It's a different slate. Oh, that was the end of the second quarter.
Wow, this game is taking a long time. The sim. The quarter just ended. It's like 11.50. Hmm. Okay. So let's see. Values of the slate. Where do we expect to be? We expect to have an infinite amount of DeLon Wright. And um, yeah, I'm fine with an infinite amount of DeLon Wright. I'm fine with 10% of Haywood Highsmith. Absolutely love that. Um, I, it, there is less of a chance of him closing in garbage time. This is mostly him smashing threes for no reason. Uh, but I think that's about a 10% chance of happening versus 0%. Now, has he been playing? You know, I should say the way I just did the check, Haywood Highsmith stats. It's the second search. Yeah, 36 minutes, two games ago. I was like, I'm not out of my mind, right? They do play, they, they, they will still run this man into the ground. Yes, yes, they will still run this man into the ground. So I, it's possible. I just wanted to make sure it's on the range of outcomes from recent life. Now, let's see. What do they say is impossible? Probably to give me less than 90% DeLon Wright. Great. That's fine. Okay. So now we've got enough Miami exposure. All right. So now I like what I'm seeing. I, I want to make sure every single guy at the top of my list is in this game. Because the entire slate tonight, nothing to do with these first games. Yes, a little smidgen here, the smidgen there, the order of the top guys, whatever. You got lucky, right? I mean... The slate and whether the like the part where we make our decisions and our decisions affect reality in a positive manner that happens at 6 30. When you get the starters from Miami, you got to go one way or the other with your decisions, and this is going to be different. So, I'm going to tell you all these guys are poor, but you don't play these guys necessarily, right? Delon Wright, if he doesn't start, way more speculative. I mean, 23 percent, he's still core, so never mind. I mean, he's, I, to me, I think he's the first guy off the bench, he's the first guy off my bench, he's definitely over the other guy, unless we hear otherwise, but. We haven't seen that, right? So what, what was the other guy's ownership? So I'm on that, but I, I will say, like, I probably, yeah, I have a little along this Williams too. I'm not, I don't think 40% is going to stick. I think they made that ownership at the old projections and we will see a new ownership whenever they update that. But let's see. Um, uh, what else do I got? Yeah, so I don't want that much BAM because I think the field will get way too much on BAM and his, his usage just doesn't increase. He could still get there, but he could always get there. He's a big, you know, and it's not higher chance than other teams. And he's playing in a kind of a tough environment against big guy. You know what I mean? So anyway, okay. So 50% Kevin Love is absolutely outrageous. I think he's a fine play, but 5X is absolutely the most I would consider. And that's a lot. Let, let's say 3X on Kevin Love. A smidge. A smidge is fine. I mean, 3X, you know, if he goes up to 10%, I will consider 30% Kevin Love. It's always relative to what the field thinks, right? So for now, 15% relative to a 5% Kevin Love, but let's update ownership. Everything, and that's how you should be thinking about the slate too. Big stands are, you know, fine for some guys. If you've got infinite money, probably easiest to think about and like um, to keep yourself uh, in a co coherent state of mind during your gambling. But I don't need a coherent state of mind. I'm fine with having, I like exploring the multiverse, having kind of a somewhat fractured existence, being alive in many different scenarios. For instance, if Alondis Williams DNPs, uh, no new ownership. Okay. Um, but yeah, so get a ton of these guys from the Miami Sacramento game. And beyond that, have a smidgen of like De'Aaron Fox to score points. Uh, Jaron Jackson Jr., Halliburton, the highest scoring guys. So you get your, you get your value from Miami Sacramento. You'll figure out what it is later, right? Don't really care what it is. Shocking that I would be fading Siakam. That's not intentional and it's not going to stand. Um, he, he's in the highest scoring, not going to stand. Absolutely must have a minimum amount of Siakam. But anyway, you know, all these guys at the top of the list, I want some of them. If I, you know, I don't want to have to put that in. It should know that. We just have enough value. Okay, so the other thing is like I added an artificial max of 50% to the slate when I thought it was going to have no value. So let me go through and see. Duncan Robinson now, I mean, he's not going to be 5%, but I might allow 65% Duncan Robinson. I think that's reasonable. Just like, you know, they just don't have another guy to jack up shots. And I know he has to shots. I know he's still a shooter. Like, let's actually, though, let's look at his points. 16, rebounds three, assists four. It's just that the assists four thing, right? Like, that's that seems nuts. Let's look over it. I got to go over here to the assist prop page now. Because I don't, I don't think assist four is where they're going to have Duncan Robinson, right? It, they will have taken him off the board. Yeah. Oh, he has an implied assist prop of one. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take over. I I can't get to actual assists, so I'm going to do points plus assists. 
Oh no. Okay. There, there it is. Points plus assist implies four. Okay. They got it. All right. I'm showing, I was misreading points plus rebounds to points plus assist. Gigi Jackson still pushing his max. That's a bit surprising to me. We'll see if that stands. Um, but you know, he, he's high usage guy in, in that game environment. It's probably fine. I just don't, I don't understand this Caleb Martin situation. What's going on with the ownership? How is it not going to get there? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who's going to start. We got some chat in the Discord about it. There could be a weird starter for the Miami Heat. And it's not going to be a joke, I don't think. I don't think if you get like Kane starting or somebody, they're not doing a spot, a spot start tonight. Somebody could get real rotation minutes because I don't know. I don't know what's going on with this team. Maybe it's like it could be DeLon Wright showcase night. You know what I mean? Like It, it seems pretty likely that it's going to be somebody showcase. It's either him, DeLon, Alondis Williams, somebody from Miami. So I, I could talk about that all day. All these takes below that are more speculative. So, you know, and there's a lot of good value. That's the thing. Nobody's under like 5X value. So I that's why I initially set the limit of 50% is because all these guys are fine. You know, Jalen Brunson is fine. Barrett's fine. Turner's fine. DiVincenzo is fine. Bam's fine. Kevin Love's fine. Quickly's fine. Barnes, yeah, not as much Harrison Barnes. Uh, Nick Claxton's fine. Who's that? Oh, Jacoby Myers game. Stupid. Haywood Highsmith. Mm-hmm. Fine. Like you just got a zillion fine guys. You know what I mean? I, I don't know what to tell you. Like these guys are all fine. They're between five and six. And and like, yeah, so Indiana, Indiana, like we don't really have that much, even with Nesmith out, right? Like there just wasn't that much value. So you can get to some, but it's mostly just, yeah, with how, what, what do we get with Nesmith out? Let's look at that because I haven't looked at that yet. And that's the one more piece of news we have for the slate. So let me make sure I've reviewed all of the news, news and views. The views, of course, just being my random stuff that I have said completely out of nowhere in general slash watching every game every night and being very, very personally invested in everything aside from the weekends. So obviously you've seen the amount I watch. Actually, you know, I still watch the games. I just don't prep the slates at all. And I don't MME. And yeah, it takes away a little bit. So that's why I do this. I do enjoy it. I enjoy the game of the, of the draft Kings part of this separately from enjoying the uh, NBA. Okay. So let's look, uh, yeah, Siakam, right? Four more points. So okay, forty six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's why I, I suspected I was going to be wrong and upset about the Siakam levels today, and I am. And I have to get like what? What even is it a minutes thing or or is it a usage thing? I assume that oh, they're not quite. We're not quite agreeing on minutes. Okay, well, why? I don't, I don't get that. This is a Siakam revenge game as well. If you buy that, that's not my thing. Oh, okay. Now that is a uh, that's an actual overlay alarm now. So now I go over to soccer and I look at, is there overlay for today's game? And I see not really eh, a little bit in the quarter, right? 200 times. Nope. 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 Not really. Nope. Okay. Overlay fishing done. Siakam fishing begun. So I want to be double the field on Siakam just because like, what, what's going on here? I don't understand why the projection is lower than his actual usage in the situation. So definitely getting a fair amount of Siakam. And he, Halliburton, I mean, obviously just like by default, right? 54, 54. That's what I'm saying. Like, what? why are we not at 54? Like with Nesmith out, I just think some of these usage are a bit suspect. It's, still, it's minutes again? We're not going to get, I mean, does Halliburton not get those minutes? Halliburton stats. In a competitive game, 34, 34, 34. All right, my bad. You know that, Siakam stats. Double check. Okay. Well, no, see, 36 versus the Raptors. At the Raptors, 35 for the Hornets. So I think my take's right for Siakam, and their take is right for Halliburton. So leaving Halliburton at his adjusted Saberson value for the subset of high-scoring games that I've chosen. And leaving Siakam at the crazy adjusted... Actually, you know, I'm going to go all the way to 36 because that wasn't the range of outcomes. And I think he should be projected for a bit more, 46. Because that, that'll also put him in terms of rank ordering. I think I want to go to a higher stand. I'm I'm this feels like a, where I'm gonna lose some money tonight. So losing my money tonight a little bit on Siakam. It's decided not really revenge Siakam, more usage with Nesmith off the court and minutes Siakam. But if you like revenge Siakam, fine. All right, yes, yes, that's a different alarm. That's not actually gambling related. Okay. Um yeah, this is a fine core now. Love it. 100% on this core. I mean, 50% Halliburton is a bit much to be locked in in the first game. But also, he's a great play. And the question is is minutes, right? And that that's the thing. That's why I'm going to limit it a little bit. 
Halliburton's a fine play. I, it's just that like whenever the limit on a guy is the coach, I hate it. I hate that so much. And so that's the case with Halliburton. They're playing him a limited number of minutes ish and the coach decides that. And so I don't want 50% of my money to be decided by a coach. So <sighs> fine. I'm going off Halliburton on a short slate seems really wise, really wise. But I guess there's a lot of other value in the middle that I'm fine with. I, I am. I really am fine with a bunch of other middle value. You just saw me talk about that a moment ago. And I think, I mean, Hawk is at 2%. They haven't been giving him the minutes. I know they haven't been giving him the minutes. I'm going to go and adjust this back down just because of that. I think what if we get to the Saber Sim, we probably still get to a fair amount of Hawk right? Yeah. No? If we go down that little? Okay. All right. But yeah, I think this core is reasonable. And I'm going to stick with Delon Wright, assuming... What is that assuming? Is that assuming he starts? How many minutes are we giving him? Yeah, that's assuming he starts. So I don't know what to assume about these starters, guys. And that's why I don't... I There's a fifth one. That's all I can say about them, right? Delon Wright is who it is in this draft. I'm going to put him as core for tonight. But the caveat on that is, assuming he starts, I don't know. They could start Alonis Williams. That would be stupid. Maybe they do. I mean, they could start... I don't know who they start at the one tonight. I don't know. I don't know. It's weird. So I don't think they've had this exact combination of guys yet. And you should have a lot of exposure to that game. That's all I can say at this point in the day. I, I, the, the ownership, come on. I just did. I, I'm pretty sure I just did a reset. Come on. Show me the ownership update. It's been half an hour. All right, fine. They're going to be owned. You're going to have a lot of Duncan on it. It's not, I'm not the only guy who's going to own Duncan Robinson tonight. I shouldn't be the only guy on Pascal Siakam. I think that's my core. DeLon Wright, the fifth heat starter, Duncan Robinson, and Siakam. I don't want to say DeLon Wright. Just to, you know, that's how I'm going to put it, just so I'm not misquoted later. The fifth starter, Duncan Robinson, and Siakam. And if it's not if he's not starting, I just don't. It's, it's a toss-up, and you probably want to build in a rule. I will probably build in a rule on the fly for what I think is going to happen based on Saberson projections, based on other people's projections, and scuttlebutt if we've heard any news so listen to the heat beat reporters i mean not ira i mean, he's fine you're just probably not gonna get useful news from him but listen to other reporters around the heat organization around their opponents tonight sacramento not, not probably not sacramento but you know what i mean like just try to find information on this game that's that's the whole slate i've said it 10 times so let me just also say you're good enough you're strong enough and gosh darn it someone's got to win that money it's 100k again and hey let's get it this time hefty might as well be us.